On June of 2001, Disney will release its 41st film, Atlantis The Lost Empire. The film started production shortly after the release of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Instead of making another musical, they decided to make an action adventure film. The movie was directed by Gary... Why do y'all do this to me? And Kirk Wise, who you may recognize as the director of Beauty and the Beast. The duo returns to direct Atlantis, but they didn't want Atlantis to be depicted as an underwater colony. Kirk Wise has this to say while working on the film. From the get-go, we were committed to designing it from top to bottom. Let's get the architectural style, clothing, heritage, costumes, how they sleep, and how they speak. So we brought people on board who will help us with these ideas. A lot of love went into this movie, and I admire the fact that so much effort went into this. <laughs> I'm beating around the bush, y'all. Atlantis had a budget of $120 million, and this movie fucking flopped. Just like The Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis chose a bad time to be released. Laura Croft was released on the same day, and with The Fast and the Furious and Dr. Doolittle 2 dropping the following week, this movie did not stand a chance. <laughs> now remember in my old Disney video I said that Atlantis was boring, but in all honesty, I never fully watched this movie until like a few days ago. I keep telling y'all not to watch those older videos, but y'all don't listen to me. Anyways, now that I watched it, what do I think about Atlantis? Well, let's find out. This is the mystery of Atlantis. Our main character Milo, voiced by Michael J. Fox, wants to seek approval from the chairman to get a crew to find Atlantis. They think that he's wasting his time, but shortly after leaving work, Mr. Whitmore gives Milo the opportunity to find the city of Atlantis. The crew is assembled, and the journey to Atlantis begins. I can say that the movie gets dark at times. At the start of the journey, they're attacked by a mechanical... crab, I, I don't know what that shit is. They lost a few people trying to escape from whatever that thing was. They have a small ceremony, and they continue their journey. This would be a great moment if it wasn't immediately followed up with a joke. Anyways, the journey continues. Milo and the people quickly connect with each other. And believe me when I say, they started fucking with Milo out of nowhere. But whatever, they're cool now. They wake up early due to the fireflies setting their camp on fire. All Milo was trying to do was take a shit. But hey, some crew members survive. Hey, the last bug done bit me on my set upon. Somebody's gonna have to suck out this poison. I don't want nobody to jump up at once. Look, I know him speaking like that is part of the joke, and it is funny, but I, I deadass don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> a few minutes later, Milo and the rest of the crew find the lost city of Atlantis, while also running into a character by the name of Kida, voiced by none other than Kree Summers. This scene also drops in that the commander, Helga, and the rest of the crew may have ulterior motives, which I don't think this movie did a great job hiding the fact that this guy is evil. The next few minutes are Milo and Kida exploring more of Atlantis, and discovering more about Atlantis' past, and how to get their city back to the way it was. Shortly after, the crew completely turned on Milo, admitting that they were just doing it for the money. He does kidnap by the commander, and the crew prepares to go home. That is until Audrey, the mole, Vinny, and the other characters have a change of heart. The commander and Helga leaves everybody else on Atlantis, so Milo and his crew lead to save Atlantis. And after a few minutes of shooting at each other, the commander is defeated, he does save, and Atlantis is back to the way it was. Milo chooses to stay in Atlantis with Kida and the others go back home with all their riches. A while after the Atlantis adventure, the crew is all fancied up making up stories about what happened to the rest of the crew, with the movie ending with Milo and Kida together on Atlantis. I admire how ambitious this story is, it's nothing too complicated to understand, and it is a fun time. However, I got a lot of shit to talk about. Now like I said, I do like the plot for this movie. For a Disney film, it gets dark at times, but that's also its problem. It's a Disney movie. The jokes are hit and miss, but mostly misses. I mean, Jebediah makes me laugh a bit, but everyone else tries too damn hard to be funny. Whether it be a character repeating the same joke from earlier, or characters continuing the joke when it honestly should have stopped moments ago. I know why they added these jokes in the movie. It's a Disney flick, and no one would see this if it was just serious shit for the majority of the movie. Well, no one saw this movie regardless, but this movie is held back by some lackluster jokes. The pacing is fine though. About 40 minutes in, Milo and the crew find Atlantis. I thought they were going to take a long time just to get there, but they managed to find Atlantis towards the end of the second act, and the third act is dedicated to saving Atlantis, so props to that. I remember as a kid thinking this movie looked gorgeous, and I still think it's a beautiful movie to look at. The visuals are the best part of the movie for me. I love seeing 2D animated films use CG in a creative way, while also making it look good. The final act where Atlantis is again back to normal is some of the best use of CG in 2D. Also, I like this one scene where Milo is pissed that he led everyone to Atlantis and he goes off on Joshua. This is the most expressive Milo has been in this entire movie and I love how it's animated. 350 animators, artists, and technicians were working on Atlantis and man what a turnout. I know this is probably a me problem but I hate the part where everyone turns on Milo just to go back on the side. Man fuck all y'all. I know they changed their minds but it doesn't feel right if you know what I mean. Like listen to the scene with Benny. We've done a lot of things we're not proud of. Robbing graves and plundering 
under any tombs or double parking. But nobody got hurt. Well, maybe somebody got hurt, but nobody we knew. This whole scene just doesn't sit well with me. I can't tell you how many times I've seen characters do this in different movies, but this one just kind of got to me. Even though I saw it coming. I also don't like Helga near the end of the movie. She does help save the day, but only because the commander portrayed her. I know she didn't have much of a choice, but eh, I could care less, honestly. I, um... Well, I got nothing to talk about. <laughs> Atlantis isn't bad, but it isn't great either. I love the animation way more than I thought it would, and I had some fun watching this movie. However, I think everything else is just fine. The score is generic, the cinematography is fine, the humor is all over the place, and the villain is just your typical bad guy just cuz. I will say I would have loved to see this at the show. The directed DVD sequel was a TV pilot, and shortly afterwards the show was supposed to be released, but sadly got canned. The world of Atlantis is interesting, but sadly, this is a Disney movie I don't see myself returning to. Yeah,